Hi, my name is Camille. I'm going to be showcasing a custom block that I made for Airtable. And it is intended to help people who have a base set up to track when a particular unit of something has been checked out or checked back into their system. So let's say you are the IT department of an office and you have a bunch of laptops that you give out to your employees, or you're an event um, company that you, you have an inventory of tables and chairs that you give out and rent to people so they can have their events, they turn it in back to you. Or you're a property management company and you have a bunch of addresses that you manage and each um, address has multiple units which might have different renters. So for all of these different use cases, you might want to track how that item has changed in its condition over time, meaning if you give it to somebody in the condition good and they give it back to you in condition poor, for instance, you might want to track that over time and keep a log of it. So um, with that all, that all that in mind, we're going to walk through how this block works. So if I click on a button field associated with um, my custom block, from any of the appropriate tables in the base, I will get a couple of different actions depending on the type of record that I clicked on. So in this case, we are in the items table um, and the options I have available are to add a new unit. So if I buy a new one of these chairs and add it to my inventory, um, or I can check out one of the units of this item type that's already in my inventory out to somebody. So in this case, this chair, I have three of those in stock and all three of them are available. So if I click on checkout select, I can pick from all of those units that are linked to this item. So I have one that's in good condition and two that are in the condition fair. But if I um, just wanted to quickly rent out the one that's in the best condition, I can click checkout auto and it will pick the one that was in good condition because that was the best condition. And it's been pre-filled in with the asset already linked in. It's copied over the um, condition that that item was in when we clicked the button into the original condition field. It's also pre-filled in the date that it was reserved with today's date. So that's great. Um, we can now, if I click on this button again, check out select, um, that one that was in good condition is no longer available because it isn't available and it shouldn't be checked out to multiple people at the same time. This is all controlled by views and you can set up your views in the settings panel of this block. Um, but let's say I buy a new one of these chairs. I can um, click the add new unit button and say another chair. Um, same thing as before, condition has been pre-filled in with the best possible condition. A note about the condition fields, um, it's set up for all single select fields and it will only make note of condition options that are available in all three condition fields. So the one that's associated with the assets table and also the two that are associated in log. Um, so if we take a look at this option, we see that excellent is an available, um, is an accept available condition type and it's the highest um, order, but it doesn't exist in those two other single select fields, which is why it wasn't pre-selected. Um, so purchase date has been pre-filled in with today's date and an item has been linked. So that's how um, the, the buttons work if you're in the items table, but if you're in the assets table, so these are the individual units um, that I have available, uh, I can click a button field associated with this custom block and I have a couple of different options. So I can check out the unit as well and then, um, it's not gonna ask me for which unit because we are on a particular unit and it knows to check out that one. Um, or I can view history. In this case, this has never been rented out to anybody, so there's no history to view. So you can see no log records shows up. Um, and I can't check it in either because it hasn't been checked out. It's not currently checked out. Um, so those are the two additional buttons available if you're looking at a individual unit. Um, I'm going to pick one that is currently rented out. Um, and we can see that checkout is no longer clickable, but check-in is. So if I click check-in, 
it's going to ask me what condition is the item being returned in. So um, they got it in condition fair. I'm going to say it's being returned in condition fair and I'm going to click done. And so this, uh, that log record had been closed out. I can no longer check it back in because it is checked in. I can check it out again if I want it. If I click view history, um, I can look at that record um, and see the changes that had been made. So we see that the returned condition had been pre-filled in based on what we clicked in that pop-up modal. And then the date returned was pre-filled in with today's date because that's when we click the button. And lastly, if we do the same thing, but from the log table, our only button option is to check um, an item in. Um, so in this case, the one I clicked on, it's already checked in, so it's not available. Um, so this works very well with the type of base that uh, I have just displayed, but if you don't have a base that's set up exactly like this one, some of these options are optional. So um, for instance, if you don't have a table of unit types, so if in this case, if you don't have an items table, you only have unique units, um, you don't have multiple units of the same thing, you can turn off that, um, that functionality entirely if you want. Or um, instead, let's say when you add a new unit um, of a particular type of item, what if instead of using a date field or a date time field, you wanted to use a created time field or some type of roll up or some other, um, some other field to mark that? Or if you don't want to mark that at all, you can turn off pre-fill the origin date and it won't try and pre-fill in a particular date field. So that's completely optional as well. And lastly, um, if you don't want to track condition over time, you don't have to. You can turn that off and then the check in button will become a one click action. There's no modal that will pop up. It will just mark that um, particular unit as checked in. So that's the quick and dirty rundown of how this block works. Um, please feel free to leave me your comments and feedback. I'm very proud of this one. And um, I think it'll be very useful for anybody who has to check things in or out. Or even if you have like an attendance tracker, this would work quite well for that as well, especially if you turn off condition. So um, again, thanks for watching.